Look for more possible deviations. I think I already know where the next one is. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. <laughs> yes, let it ball up inside you. That's that's healthy. It's the healthy way to go about it. Broom closet. Uh huh. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. Or maybe not. Surely there's got to be something, something cool. There was nothing here. No choice to make. No path to follow. Just an empty broom closet. No reason to still be here. <laughs> now I like this place. I think I'm gonna bunker down and make this my new office. It was baffling that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom closet. He wasn't even doing anything. At least if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. As it is, he's literally just standing there doing sweet F.A. What? Are you... are you really still in the broom closet? <laughs> Standing around doing nothing? Why? Please offer me some explanation here. I'm... I'm genuinely confused. It's a nice broom closet. I like it. You what? do realize there's no choice or anything in here, right? If I'd said Stanley walked past the broom closet, at least you would have had a reason for exploring it to find out. But it didn't even occur to me because literally this closet is of absolutely no significance to the story whatsoever. I never would have thought to mention it. <laughs> I don't know, this is entertaining. Maybe to you this is somehow its own branching path. Maybe when you go talk about this with your friend, you'll say, Oh, did you get the broom closet ending? The broom closet ending was my favorite. <laughs> I hope your friends find this concerning. I don't sound like that. Do I? Stanley was fat and ugly and really, really stupid. Hey. He probably only got the job because of a family connection. That's how stupid he is. That all with drug money. Also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, now you're just being spiteful. Come on. Well, I've come to a very definite conclusion about what's going on right now. You're dead. You got to this broom closet, explored it a bit, and were just about to leave because there's nothing here, when a physical malady of some sort shut down your central nervous system and you collapsed on the keyboard. Well, in a situation like this, the responsible thing is to alert someone nearby so as to ensure that your body is taken care of before it begins to decompose. <laughs> Hello? Anyone who happens to be nearby, the person at this computer is dead. He or she has fallen prey to any number of your countless human physiological vulnerabilities. It's indicative of the long-term sustainability of your species. Please remove their corpse from the area and instruct another human to take their place at the computer, making sure they understand basic first-person video game mechanics and filling them in on the history of narrative tropes in video gaming, so that the irony and insightful commentary of this game is not lost on them. All right, when you've done that, just step out into the hallway. <laughs> No, I'm still staying here. Surely there's gotta be more. One more piece of dialogue, maybe? Nope, doesn't look like it. Although, I, I wanna be sure. I wanna be absolutely sure I don't miss anything. No, nope, looks like that's it. All right, that was that was something. Ah, second player. It's good to have you on board. I guarantee you can't do any worse than the person who came before you. <laughs> I think you'd be very disappointed. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. All right, time to go down. It's over here. Nothing exciting. 
But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all? None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. <laughs> were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange. This can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. Oh, God. Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. It was so much fun, and Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How <laughs> was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself, believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too, surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control that this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress on his back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment, and my wife, and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay. So much for Stanley that. began screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, 
For just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy. This much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this, and in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day, the very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career, and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. So all in all, a happy ending. Oh god. Alright, next, uh, deviation. Even now, Stanley's office was a distant memory. What did it look like? There was a computer, perhaps, and a painting. Was it a painting or a photo? He could no longer recall. Alright, so the dialogue is still changing, that's cool. Where's that input? I want to enter all the inputs. I didn't miss it, did I? I just want to make absolutely sure. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Nope, nothing. Right then, so where to next? I think I'll go up to the the boss's office this time. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. No, nope, can't go in there. I don't think I can ever go in any of these doors. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office. Hoping he might coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Ah, yes. Let's see if we can go in here. Oh. To be rich, is it a crime? To commit crimes, isn't it rich? What a life it would be to have to pick just one. Oh, extreme bathrooms. This one's pretty extreme. Oh, there's nothing in here, though. Doesn't look like I can interact with anything. It's a fancy bathroom, though. Quite fancy indeed. Huh. Alright, then. That's that question answered. Oh, input. Two more. I wonder what's going to happen if I get them all. Ooh. A, p a panda with a gun to its head. That is... Something else. Business strategy. Alright, let's see what this is all about. Hmm. So surely going down is an option as well. Is the narrator singing? What the hell is this? This is something else. It's 
It's lovely music, though. All right, what, what's what's going on? <laughs> Did he just say getting bored now? What happens if I push up again? Oh. Just leads me back. Well, that's the game icon. What's that say? I am the most expensive boss. Alright, let's go down this time. Let's see if this makes any difference. Oh, Jesus. I think it's exactly the same. Yeah, I think he's saying the same things. Okay. That was weird. <laughs> All right, let's see what else we can do. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. What could it mean? Stanley wondered aloud to nobody. He began wildly tearing through papers on the boss's desk, pulling books off the shelf, looking behind paintings, desperate for clues to his situation. But his attention was caught by a keypad behind the boss's desk. What could its purpose be? In fact, this keypad guarded the terrible secret that lay buried below his feet. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number, 2845. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. So I wonder if you do it wrong. Stanley just sat around twiddling his thumbs. Trying to input anything on the device was useless, since he could never pop. Stanley simply began entering random codes into the keypad, <laughs> knowing full well the sheer statistical unlikelihood that this would ever result in a correct combination. If he knew that the combo two eight four five. I think I was accidentally skipping dialogue there and I didn't want to. Alright, let's do it. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. Truly amazing. What's this way? It's dark as hell, but there's something over here. A little alcove. Oh my god, I can't see anything. Is there anything I can interact with? Huh, why would, uh... I'm intrigued. Wonder if I have to crouch anywhere.
it seems like this is here for a reason. But maybe not. It's probably just me being crazy. No, I don't see anything. Alright then. I figured it was worth a shot. I can only go down, so let's go down. Alright, so what was, uh... Oh yeah, there was the escape. The thing labeled escape down here. I'll go that way. Interesting that there was no dialogue that time. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Let's see what this way has to offer. Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. <laughs> oh, God. The door behind him was not shut. Stanley still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. At this point, Stanley was making a conscious, concerted effort to walk forward and willingly confront his death. <laughs> Let's do it. I'm not afraid of death. Geronimo! Um. Is that, is that what just happened? Nope. into motion, and Stanley was inched closer and closer to his demise, he reflected that his life had been of no consequence whatsoever. Stanley can't see the bigger picture. He doesn't know the real story, trapped forever in his narrow vision of what this world is. Perhaps his death was of no great loss, like plucking the eyeballs from a blind man. And so he resigned and willingly accepted this violent end to his brief and shallow life. Hello. I regret nothing. Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator, as Stanley was led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed every bone in his body, killing him instantly. Oh. But not really. What the hell? And yet it would be just a few minutes before Stanley would restart the game back in his office as alive as ever. <laughs> what exactly did the narrator think he was going to accomplish? When every path you can walk has been created for you long in advance, death becomes meaningless, making life the same. Do you see now? Do you see that Stanley was already dead from the moment he hit start? This blueprint shows the office from the beginning of the game. Path from Stanley's office to the two doors. That was first. That was the first part of the game that was built. Sections have been added and altered throughout the development. Through the core, though the core layout remains almost identical to the first iteration. It's like a little museum. Corridor. The pacing of this opening section was important to get right. This corridor has been moved and altered to make sure the player reaches the two doors in a good time. So it's like a like a little developer's commentary type thing. Almost. The two doors. The set of two open doors was the very first concrete piece of the Stanley Parable's design. Once this room was created, the rest of the game emerged as an extension of it. An exploration of the contradiction this room posed. Indeed. Indeed. Let's see what let's see what the rest of the stuff has to say. Nature paintings. Yep, those those certainly are paintings of nature. I would agree. And my computer, of course. So what the hell is this? Ah. Fascinating. <laughs> 
turn off all the computers. Oh, can't open the doors. Button sounds. A selection of the, the sounds throughout the game when buttons are pressed. Each sound is a mix of a keyboard stroke and a synthesized tone. I see. Fascinating. That's a fancy one. Huh. I kind of like that one. That one's my favorite. Now the credits. Written and designed by Davy Redden and William. I'm probably going to butcher that. Pugue. I think. Yeah, what's, 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 what's the name of the narrator? Kevin Brighting. Good job all around, you guys. All you guys. Did a damn good job. What's, uh... What's going on here? Uh, more office props. Maintenance room. An early version of the maintenance room. Ah, uh, yes, those those good old source engine dev textures. PC load letter. What the fuck is that? Ah, uh, yes, the, uh, the screenshots that they released before the game, obviously. <laughs> Oh, Greenlight. In September 2012, we submitted the Stanley Parable to Greenlight, Valve's process of approving games for Steam. The Greenlight page had only a series of cryptic photos, which were still enough to win the community's approval. Oh, Warzone. What is this? It's a very, a very poignant scene. The hell of war. The innocents lost. And shit. Warzone. Early in development, we designed an ending where Stanley would wind up... End up on a battlefield fighting aliens. What the hell? The action game would become sentient and the war... And, the, and would wage war against the narrator. We realized shortly after starting to build it that it was far too jokey and on the nose for the tone of the game. Plus, some people interpreted it as making fun of people who like shooters, which was not our intention. I like shooters. Pretty much most of the games that I own are shooters. The alien base with Murica. Damn, there's all these different areas to go and there's the other side of the room that I never went to. I have burning questions. What is this? What is Stanley's last name? Narrator emails. After the second trailer, we sent out... We asked questions... No. Okay, come on. Read, please. We sent out... We asked people to email the narrator for questions. While we had initially planned to use these in further promotional materials, we never found the perfect use for them. Here are a selection of those emails. Oh, so that's what they are. Oh, giving away those other people's... Email address. Oh. Well, that's, that's lovely. Very eloquent. 